Wow. Past Dennis really screwed over future Dennis. Here's the culprit. The crooked cutting culprit. That... That's a lot of chips. Yeah, so I finally got around to planing down some of these slabs that I cut on my sawmill. Uh, probably about like two years ago. So these have been sitting in my drying shed. So I thought no big deal when I was cutting these. Uh, the, the blade kind of wandered a little bit on me. Ooh, that is beautiful. But uh, I thought, well, I'll just clean that all up with the planer sled when I finally get around to flattening these, these slabs. And I've had a lot of time pushing this router back and forth, flattening these slabs, to think about why that blade wanders back and forth. Don't get me wrong, I love my sawmill. I still think it's a great design. The cuts it makes sometimes are not entirely straight. So here's a blade that I've been using most recently on the saw. And it's a uh, three quarter inch, and I don't know the thickness, it's I think three tooth per inch. And so I was, I was looking at this and I, my first thought was, well, I'll just go out and I'll buy the biggest, thickest saw blade I can and just put it on the saw because that's what all the big guys use, right? They use a big inch and a quarter heavy saw blade and that'll solve all my problems, right? Well, I was thinking, why would it solve my problems? I mean, the real problem is that the blade can flex and go down and up pretty easily. So any little force, it, it kind of tends to kind of track around in the wood and make these really cool, like, wavy designs that are just really not good for making woodworking boards. So for a given span, say you have this thin piece of metal here, and you have a force going down, right? That force is going to make it... The, the saw blade bend a little bit, even if it's if it's tensioned. Just think this is twice as wide, so add like another one here, right? And uh, same span, and then put the same force down. And I was going to do a demonstration of this and build a jig for you guys and put a weight on the end and then put a weight in the middle and be all scientific about it. I, I don't think you need that. I think you guys are smart enough to get that. You can see that adding width here it's not going to make it that much stiffer, that, that if you have a force, it's still going to bend. Is it the thickness? Well, again, how much does a thickness matter in, like, a stretched piece of metal? I mean, we're not talking about going from, like, you know, 10 thou to, like, one inch thick. We're talking about, like, you know, maybe even doubling the thickness, but really, it's still a flimsy piece of metal, right? So I was doing some research, trying to find an equation, because I'm a math guy, if you didn't know already, and I was trying to find an equation that could explain the relationship between tension in a, in a piece and like a def deflection and force, and I actually came across an equation for guitar strings. I'm not sure I'd call myself a guitarist, but I've told people that I can play. So I thought we could take a look at this equation and see how it might relate to a saw blade. And I know in the real world that things get a little bit more complicated, there's other variables, but I thought maybe we could just have a discussion about it and just see, see how it might make sense. Okay, so the equation goes like this. And this relates to a string, say this. This string has tension on it and say it's being plucked like this. Man, it is hard to write on a board and... Um, okay, so little t is uh, a tension this way, so it's a force that you're pulling on the string. Big T is the tension that the string's being held at, so it's already stretched and now you're kind of pushing on it. D is the distance it's going to move with that force. L here's the length, T is the tension, what did I miss, anything? And there's a four for some reason, I don't know. Oh, this is way better. I don't know why I didn't just write like this to begin with. All right, so uh, let's, let's uh, say this relates to the saw blade. Well, you, let's do a vertical band saw just to make it simpler, but say here's a, here's a band saw, right? It's got a blade here. You put some, some force on the blade. That's T, that's the force right here. How many? How many pounds of pressure do you have on that blade? Um, and let's see, you're cutting a piece, right? And it's, it's exerting a little bit of a sideways force. Well, I want to minimize D, the distance that that blade goes. So let me, let me simplify this equation a little bit real, real fast. 
So if you remember algebra, you can you can move this L over here. So you can do um, T times L um, equals 4 dt, right? And then uh, if we want d alone, we can divide both sides by 4t. So then we're left with d is directly proportional to little tl divided by 4t. And if you remember algebra, um, that basically means that these things are linearly proportional and this is inversely proportional, meaning if you increase little t, little d increases. If you increase big T, little d decreases, right? So what is this telling us? If t gets bigger, if we put more tension on the blade, it'll deflect less. No duh. If the side force we're pushing on it is less, it'll deflect less. <laughs> if the length, so here's the length right here, if we shorten the distance here of the blade and support it closer, the deflection decreases. We know all this already, right? So this is an equation for guitar strings, but it is telling us the same exact thing that we already know anecdotally from looking at other sawmills, other people's experience, YouTube videos, um, manufacturers, what they say. What do they say? Well, they say support the blade as close to the piece. So if you're cutting, have some, some supports. Move those supports closer if you're cutting a log here, right? Because you want to support the blade as close as you can to the log. It's not so much that you want to guide it going into the log, it's that you want to decrease this length here that, you, that the blade is allowed to bow. Uh, T. Um, let's, let's get to T later because I think that one's an interesting one. Big T. Tension. Well, yeah, no duh. So like, if you have a bandsaw, again, if you want it to bow less, you put more tension on this blade here. And then the last one I thought was really interesting is little t is the force on the blade. Now, why is there a side force on a saw blade cutting a log to begin with? So, you know, here's, here's your sawmill, here's a log, it's cutting through it. Well, I know from just experience that when the blades get dull, it tends to wander more. So something's happening at the, on the teeth. When the teeth get dull, that means there's some kind of like side force happening on, on the blade. Well, now that's interesting because you think about how many teeth are running through this log at any given time. If you got like a ton of teeth in there and each one is a little bit dull and it's exerting a little bit of a force, that all adds up. If you have a lot fewer teeth in that, in that log, each one's still a little bit dull and it's exerting a little bit of side force, but there's only a few of them compared to many in the log. So altogether, you're going to have less force to push that blade. So what does that tell you? That tells you that less tooth per inch is better and it's going to make the blade cut straighter. Um, now we could also talk about probably like gullet size and clearing sawdust from the log. Uh, because that's also important too, and the sawdust can build up and kind of cause a ramp and cause the, the blade to deflect. These are the extra variables that isn't so neatly explained by this equation. But now, what the really interesting thing is, is what's not in this equation. You don't have blade width, blade thickness. Um, now, given this is an equation for guitar strings, but there are different thicknesses for guitar strings, and the high E on, on a guitar is much, much thinner than like the low E on a bass guitar, like many, many times thinner. But this equation is the exact same. It, it's negligible to account for thicknesses of the material when, when in general it's, you're talking about a length that is much larger than the thickness of, of the string. If this doesn't blow your mind, then I'm just a total geek then, I guess. Oh, wait, one more thing. You've heard people talk about PSI. You take the tension that you're pulling the blade at divided by this cross area and you get 
pounds per square inch or PSI. But I don't know why this matters at all because the only reason to move up to a thicker saw blade is because you can't put enough pounds of tension on a thinner saw blade. This was the epiphany that really kind of blew my mind that said like, I've totally been thinking about this the entire wrong way. A thinner, smaller blade at say 30,000 PSI, well, it has a very, very small cross section. So that means that the actual pounds of force is gonna be way less than say, an inch and a half blade that's really thick. Does that make sense? So if somebody tells you they're running their saw at 30,000 PSI or whatever, that's really irrelevant unless you know the thickness of the blade that they're using because you could run a really tiny thin blade at 30,000 PSI and it's going to be all floppy because it's only going to have like 100 pounds of pressure on it versus the same PSI and if you got someone like Matt Cremona with his giant saw, he's got like a two inch blade or something like that, he's going to have like literally tons of force pulling on that blade. Okay, let me move over here because I don't want you guys to feel like you're stuck in school again. If you're building a sawmill, worry about the actual force that you're putting on the blade. Don't worry about tension in PSI. Just worry about the, the amount of pounds that you can put on, on your blade. And then the part for me that I started really saying like, oh crap, is the wheels. When I started out, I was worried about the diameter of the wheel and oh, will, it, will the blade crack and everything. And that was totally the wrong thing to worry about. I should have been worried about, can this thing handle the amount of force I gotta put on a blade so that it stays straight through a cut? So another way to think about this is, with the amount of force that you gotta put on these saw wheels, would you put them on a trailer that weighs the same amount of weight? Because basically, you know, they're wheels, they're going really fast. Would I trust this little aluminum wheel to carry a 600 pound load at the speeds it's gonna be running on the sawmill? Yeah. So here's the deal, guys. I bit the bullet. And uh, because I had to buy new wheels anyway, I did the popular route and I got these cast iron sheaves that are um, 18 inches, I believe, 18 or 19 inches. Now the thing is, is I still don't believe that this diameter is strictly necessary. But I'll, I'll admit, for the sake of metal fatigue and everything, the bigger the wheel, the less stress you're going to put on the blade. Maybe your blade will last longer. So with these bigger wheels, though, now you have something different. You have these bushings now that it mounts to an axle. I feel like it's so kind of overkill. Bigger bearings. Uh, everything just gets so much heavier. One last thing. If you go with these, uh, these big wheels here, uh, you gotta put a belt on them because these are, these are just like V belt pulley wheels. The size that fits well is a BP, uh, is a B57, it's a 57 size B with belt. But if you buy the BP57, the P is like performance or something. So they add some extra material here to make it stronger. And the result of that is that you end up with this nice crown that's almost like the crown you get on a regular bandsaw tire. So I don't know, does that make sense? Um, let me know what you think in the comments. I wanted to make this video more to kind of spark a discussion about this stuff rather than kind of like teach you because I don't, I'm just figuring this stuff out on my own now too and I don't know if it's entirely right. But I think it kind of makes sense and so I'd love to hear what, what you guys think. A lot of people will say YouTube comments are like the worst place on the internet but uh, I, I like to think that there's, and I do think that there's a lot of good information down there because you guys are smart and maybe you're not putting out videos, but you might be doing the same stuff and I'd love to hear about it. So uh, let me know what you think down there and we'll have a little bit of a discussion. So, all right, that's all I got for you. So I hope this was uh, thought provoking, um, maybe a little bit informative and quick kind of like intro video for future 
sawmill modifications when I get the time. So if you're not a subscriber, maybe you want to click the subscribe button so that you can get alerted. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. It's hard to sit up here and play guitar.